Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to our weekly Bible study here at King's Revival Church International. My name is Gareth, and I will be sharing this week's lesson with all of you. Well, I just want to welcome each and every one of you. It's great to be with you again on the Tuesday night. Um, there's no better place to be than with you, wherever you are in your home, at your workplace, wherever you are connecting from. Um, thank you for taking the time out to, to be with me today. And you know what? This is one of the highlights of my week. I enjoy spending time with you. I enjoy uh, sp spending time in the Word of God and, and, and teaching the Word. And, um, you know, uh, today's lesson is about faith. And, and the Bible teaches us that um, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So it's, you know, it's, it's like an equation almost is if there's no faith in you, well, then you've got to ask yourself, how much time am I spending in the Word of God? How much Word do I have in me? Because more Word, more faith. And um, that's the, the power of, of faith, is that it doesn't depend on God, it depends on you, it depends on, on me. Um, I determine how much time I, I, I spend in, in prayer and I determine how much time I spend in the Word. And it's almost like we're always waiting for God to do something for us. But it's, you know, Jesus has finished the work at the cross. It's a complete, perfect um, work of, of Jesus Christ. He's defeated the enemy. He's paid for your healing. He's paid the price for your deliverance. He's paid the price already at the cross for your financial breakthrough and provision. He's paid the price for every curse to be broken over your life. Now it's up to us to walk in the victory, to walk in the faith, believing that those things are done for us. It is yes and amen. It is so in Jesus' name. So it's not like Jesus has to perform something again. No, he's he, he the the he's waiting on us to access our faith to walk in the miracles, to walk in the victory, to walk in the supernatural. So um, it's not what God can do for me. It's what God can do through me. Hallelujah! And He's waiting. He's waiting for sons and daughters who will stand up and, and, and be bold. Come boldly to the throne of grace, knowing that you're seated at the right hand of, of Jesus, knowing that He's blessed you with every spiritual blessing in, this, in the heavenlies. So it's about accessing what Jesus has paid for, what He has accomplished. It's accessing that. And so that is really what I'm going to talk about um, in this in this lesson is I'm going to talk about faith faith you know in Hebrews 11 verse 6 the Bible teaches us that without faith it is impossible to please God without faith it is impossible to please God so we've got to be a people um, that is that that is pleasing God through our faith <laughs> And what is that faith? That faith is believing on the Word of God. That faith is believing that what God says is true, is true indeed, and it's for me and for my, for my family and for my household and for my church and for, and for my life. So it's trusting. Faith is actually trusting what God has said. Hallelujah. Trusting what God has said. And we have the book of life. We have the, the roadmap for this life. It's the Bible. Um, it's His Word, it's His promises, it's His direction. So the more we get that into our hearts, into our soul, you know, that's when the faith comes up. So today, um, make sure you have your Bibles with you because I'm going to share a few scriptures. And the if you're taking notes, the title of my message is Pers Persistent Faith, Your Faith, Our Faith, God's Faith. Hallelujah. Persistent faith, your faith, our faith, God's faith. So I'm going to share four characteristics of faith or four different dimensions or facets of faith. 
and uh, maybe I'm going to share the first two to this week, and I'll probably share the, the the last two next week. So I think this is going to be a two-part series. Hallelujah! Um, for those of you that have been with me for a while, you know that I teach a 30-minute lesson. So um, and that includes my prayer at the end. So don't go away until I pray with you and trust God for the breakthrough and for the miracle. Um, in your life that you're trusting him for that you're expecting so without further ado let's look at number one persistent faith the persistent kind of faith turn with me to Luke chapter 18 and verse 1 to 8 Luke chapter 18 verse 1 to 8 and yeah we see Jesus is talking to his disciples in fact he's teaching his disciples and listen to what he has to say. He shares a parable with them. And verse 1. He told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. That they ought always to pray and not lose heart. So yeah, Jesus is teaching the disciples. And he's saying, hey, disciples, you need to always be praying. And you mustn't lose heart. So imagine that even the disciples that have been with Jesus for so long, even they, I think, sometimes felt discouraged, sometimes would lose heart because Jesus was teaching them and he was, he was, he was telling them, guys, you need to always be praying, but then don't ever give up. Don't lose heart, he, he, he says, yeah, don't become discouraged, right? So that's like an admonition. That he, that he gives them. He's teaching them. He's trying to help them. He's trying to equip them. He's trying to empower them. And he's giving them advice. And he's instructing them. And he's saying, listen, be a person of prayer. Don't just be praying sometimes. Be praying all of the times. And then don't lose heart. And I think that is just that verse is so powerful for us today. Because um, we can lose heart sometimes. You know, when, when, when the disciples were inside the boat with Jesus and the storm came up and they were all afraid, Jesus was sleeping in the boat. And uh, when Jesus wakes up and he sees what's going on and he, he not only rebukes the storm and the, and the sea, he rebukes the disciples. And what's the first thing that he addresses them with? He says, oh, you of little faith. Oh, you of little faith. He addresses their faith. In the situation, while they were fearing for their lives, he addresses their faith. And so he says, oh, you little, little, little faith. What is he, he saying? He's saying, hey, guys, disciples, you've been with me so long. Now you come against a challenge. Now you've lost your faith. After all this time, after all my teaching, after all the miracles that you have seen, after all that I've shared with you, my life, the, the word, the teaching, my presence, I'm even with you in the boat. Yet when the first sign of trouble comes, you fear. And so he addresses their faith. And I think sometimes we're like the disciples. It goes well. And then the first sign of adversity, the first sign of a struggle, the first sign of a, of a, of a, a mountain in front of us. We're, we're, you know, we throw our arms up in the air and we, we have become so afraid and we're crying out to the Lord. And then he says, hey, oh, you of little faith. You see, he addresses the faith. That's the issue. Because if your faith is at a level where you've exercised it in such a way that it works for you, that you're, when you're in faith, it doesn't matter what comes against you. It's your faith that will overcome the world. Praise God. So, so without faith, it is impossible to please God. You see, the disciples in the both lacked faith. And then when Jesus woke up, he was angry. He was displeased. <laughs> right? But then in Hebrews eleven six, it goes on to say that those who diligently seek him, they will be rewarded. You see, God rewards your faith. What does He reward your faith with? With the things that you're believing for. So yeah, we're looking at a, a persistent faith. That's the kind of faith, the first kind of faith that I want to uh, talk about. And so He says to the disciples, always be praying, don't lose heart. Verse 2 of Luke 18. He said, so now He tells the parable, in a certain city, 
there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For a while, he refused. And I'm going to come back to that because that's my favorite part of this parable. For a while, he refused. But afterward, he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps, bo widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. So, yeah, you know, it says that when you're praying for something, there may be a time of waiting. There may be, you might be praying for something now and you're trusting God for great things, but there may be a, a, a little time where you need to wait. But don't lose heart. Always be praying. Always be praying and don't lose heart. Verse 6, And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge says. And will not God give justice to his elect who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. And nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? So Jesus is saying, when I come back, am I going to find this woman's kind of faith? What faith? A persistent faith. A faith that never gives up. So Jesus asks this question because you know what? I think that this kind of faith is a rare kind of faith. Otherwise, he wouldn't be talking about it in the Bible. He says, when I come back, am I going to find people like this woman who will not give up? They will stay in prayer and they will keep praying. They will keep believing. In Hebrews 11, you look at the hall, the, the hall of faith, as I like to call it. You see that those people, those men and women in the Bible, they never gave up. Even unto death, they believed. Right? And so Jesus says, when I come back, will I find a man or woman that never stops praying, that keeps believing, that keeps trusting me, that keeps approaching me? When, you know, when the judge says no, you don't put your tail between your legs and, and then skulk off. No. What did this woman, what did woman do? She came to the judge. Give me justice. The judge says, no. She goes home and she's in her prayer closet. She comes back the next day. Judge, give me. And the judge says, no. Does she put her tail between her legs and walk off all sad and depressed? No, she doesn't do that. She goes back home into her prayer closet. Next day, she goes back to the judge. Judge, give me my justice. No. Does she, what does she do? She goes home. She's doing what Jesus said in verse 1. Don't stop praying. Don't lose heart. When I come back, am I going to find this kind of faith? This is a rare faith. Not everyone can do this. But will I find someone on earth who will pray like this woman, who will believe like this woman, who will trust like this woman? Because if you can do what this woman does, you're going to get your answer. Come on, somebody. And so, you know, this woman this or this judge he says, you know, he, um, he's thinking to himself, what kind of a woman is this? I've never experienced someone who, uh, who, who does this kind of thing. And then, of course, well, you haven't met someone like this, Mr. Judge, because this kind of faith is a rare faith. But coming back to that, that, that part that I like, the Bible says that the judge, for a while, he refused. And I want to tell someone yet today, only for a while. Come on. Only for a while will you be sick. Only for a while will you be poor. Only for a while will you be alone. Only for a while will you be struggling. Only for a while will you have to endure. 
Only for a while will you going through that will you go through that heartache and pain. Only through a, for a while will you endure the depression. Only for a while. Come on, someone. And so I would encourage you, don't stop praying. Don't stop believing because only for a while and then your breakthrough will come. Uh, only for a while. Keep praying. Keep trusting. You'll only have to endure for a while and then your miracle will happen in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And so Jesus asked the question, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth in other words will he find the persistent kind of faith will he find faith that never gives up will he find a faith where, where you just keep on coming you just keep on uh, moving forward will he find this kind of faith so the first area or well, the first characteristic of faith that i want to share with you is the persistent kind of faith so what is the title of my message it's per, it's persistent faith it's your faith it's our faith and it's god's faith hallelujah so number one persistent faith number two i call it your faith it's the your kind of faith and so this faith is up to you this faith is a faith where um you need to apply certain principles. And so if you have your Bible, turn with me to Mark chapter 5. Mark 5. And we're going to read, or we're going to look at verse 25 to verse 34. And so we know the scripture very, very well because Pastor Dill has preached it many times powerfully. Um, I've shared it a few times in these Bible study lessons. But I want to show you something. Um, that is going to bless you today. And so before we go through the actual principles of what this woman did, I want you to jump down to verse 34. And so just to, to paraphrase real quick, there was a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years. She was sick. She went to the doctors. She spent her money. They couldn't help her. She heard about Jesus. She went to Jesus and in the crowd, she touched his garment, the hem of his garment. And the moment she touched the hem of his garment, power went out of Jesus into this woman. And immediately she was healed of her sickness and she had peace. And then Jesus turned to the woman and said, Daughter, your faith has made you well. See, this is the next kind of faith I want to talk about. Is She said, Daughter, your faith has made you well it wasn't the faith of jesus because jesus wasn't expecting this woman to touch her in fact he didn't know who touched her so this kind of faith when you apply certain principles you will get certain results and so this woman tapped in to some keys for faith and so that's what i want to look at with this particular kind of faith so the first faith kind of faith that I'm teaching is the persistent kind of faith. In other words, you don't give up. You never stop praying. You never stop trusting until you get your answer. That's a persistent kind of faith. Yeah, we see that this woman activated her faith through applying certain principles. What was the first principle? Number one is verse 27. She heard the word faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of god she didn't have the new testament to read from but she heard of the miracles the wonder working power of jesus christ she heard that this jesus christ of nazareth raises the dead he gives blind to the sight he'll heal the leper well if he can heal the leper of something that's that's known to be an incurable disease well surely he can heal me of my issue of blood and so for 12 years she could not get healed but then she heard about the healer she heard about the one who heals hallelujah and then she heard the reports she heard the stories you know maybe there were some people in a house they went out they heard the stories they came in because she wasn't allowed by law to go out and to mix with people because according to leviticus she wasn't she was unclean so ceremonially she was unclean it was deemed by the law and the rabbi 
um, uh, declared her unclean. So she couldn't mix with people. She couldn't go to the synagogue. In fact, she would be stoned. She, she would be put to death if she was caught. So she was stuck in her home. She couldn't go out and socialize and be with her, her, her friends and, and do normal things. But she heard the accounts of Jesus. She heard the good news. The good news is, hey, you don't have to be a, a prisoner anymore. All you need to do is believe on Jesus. So the first thing that she did was, is she heard the gospel. She heard the gospel. You see, the gospel is the good news. The Bible or the New Testament, it's good news. When we preach, we preach the good news. We preach the gospel. Hallelujah. So this woman, number one, she heard. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Secondly, verse uh, 28 is she spoke she spoke the word. She spoke the miracle. She, she, she would speak life. She would speak um, what, she, what she needed. So, so you see, yeah, the Bible says in verse 28, For she said, she said, If I touch even his garments, I will be made well. This is the second key that, or principle that she applied before she got her miracle is that she would speak what she wanted she would speak what she wanted to see she would speak her miracle into existence and we know that there is a creative force within our tongue you might not get the result now you might not get the result today but over time over persistence things will change and so yeah she speaks the word in faith it was a faith declaration that she made it was by faith she wasn't healed yet but she said if only see it was the words of faith that she spoke i'm not just saying ignore what's going on and be delusional no i'm saying put your trust in the word put your trust in jesus so today what do we do well we say by his stripes we are healed. That's a faith declaration. He sent his word and he healed them. My God is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Hallelujah. So we start declaring the healing scriptures. We start declaring what God says over our health, over our body. Now that's a faith statement. I am in pain. I'm experiencing this, but by faith, I'm going to be healed. By faith, Jesus is, is, is healing me now. He's healing me now in Jesus' mighty name. That's a statement of faith. Praise God. Thirdly, she could see in the spirit realm, she could actually see herself being healed. Also verse 28. You see, if you can say something, it means you can see something. You say what you perceive in your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what you have formulated in your mind, what you believe on the inside, eventually comes out on the, on the outside. Hallelujah. So, so she was speaking what she was believing. You see, your words is the fruit of your heart. What you believe in your heart eventually comes out of your mouth. So this woman was, she could see herself healed. She heard about the healer and then she would speak about the healer and she could see herself being healed. And then thirdly, fourthly, sorry, she could see. And then fourth, she actually took action. She took action. She actually left the house. Come on. She actually had to take a step of faith literally right and figuratively right she had to she had to take a step in the natural but it was also a step in the spiritual because all the things that she was seeing saying trusting believing she had to act on those things or else it would just be a dream or else it would just be um, uh, just a desire but you see real faith takes steps F uh, faith without works is dead this woman didn't have dead faith. She had faith that was alive and faith that she placed in the hands of Jesus because she was trusting Jesus for her deliverance. And so she takes action. She left her house to find Jesus. 
They said to her, Jesus is going to be in the village square, in the town square. He's going to be there somewhere. Well, I'm going to go to him. Hallelujah. And then number five, the, 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 the fifth principle that, that this, of faith that this woman took was that she, she, when she grabbed that, that hem, she took it. She received. She received her healing. Hallelujah. If it wasn't the faith of it wasn't the faith of Jesus that got this woman healed, it was the your kind of faith. It was the your kind of faith. Your kind of faith works as an individual. Even Jesus wasn't ready for the your kind of faith, but it worked. Um, you see, faith is not waiting; faith is taking. Faith has the ability to take. Faith doesn't wait for change. Faith is change. And heaven can't say no to your faith. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So yeah, we see a woman. We see two women. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The first woman had a persistent faith. This was a kind of faith that doesn't give up. And then at the end of that, that in verse 8, Jesus says, when I come back, am I going to find this type of faith? Am I going to find someone like this woman who will never give up and will always keep praying? Am I going to, because this kind of faith is a rare faith. So the first kind of faith that we're talking about is a persistent faith, never giving up. And if you pray like that, if you live like that, only for a while, you're only going to do it for a while, but then your breakthrough will come speedily. Endure like that for a while and your answers are going to come in Jesus' name. So this woman had a persistent faith. The second woman, she had the your kind of faith. Because when the miracle came, when, the, when, her, when she received the miracle, Jesus said to her, woman, your faith has made you well. Jesus said, your faith has, has brought the miracle. Hallelujah. Your faith. You see, the woman, the second woman, the woman with the issue of blood, she tapped into faith principles. She tapped in and she applied those principles and she got a result. And that's the your kind of faith. You see, we need, we, there's a part that we need to play when we want to see our miracle. Once again, it's not waiting for what, what God can do for you. It's what can God do it will do through you. He's, Jesus has already accomplished everything you need at the cross of Calvary over 2020 something years ago. Amen. We need to be like the woman of faith that will be so radical, that will be so bold that she comes and hum, I take my healing. I'm going to take my provision. I'm going to take by faith. I'm going to take what Jesus has paid the price for. And that's what Jesus wants from us. He wants people to be radical, full of faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. The just, the righteous shall live by faith and faith alone. When we live by faith, we please Him. He, he wants us to be radical people that will believe for great things. That will, that, that, that will walk in the supernatural, that will walk in the overflow, that will believe for great things, that will trust Him for breakthroughs and miracles. Hallelujah. If, if Jesus did it for them, He can do it for you as well. I want to pray for you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray the blood, the blood, the blood upon everyone yet today. I pray that the healing working power of Jesus to flow through your body right now. Those of you that are trusting for uh, healing, I pray healing into your body, healing into your bones, healing into your life, healing into your mind, healing into your heart, healing into your muscles, your sinews, your organs. In the name of Jesus, be healed. He's healing you now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for financial provision. 
I thank you for visas being delivered to you. I thank you for job opportunities coming to your door. I thank you that you will walk into great uh, positions uh, of influence, great uh, uh, jobs with good benefits, great salaries, great working hours to come your way in Jesus' name. Lord, you make a way for everyone on this call. You deliver them. You set them free of every bondage. Every addiction is broken in the name of Jesus. And I speak the, 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 the peace of God, the joy of the Lord, His righteousness, His peace over your home, over your life right now in Jesus' name. And we thank you. We thank you for the miracle. We thank you for the breakthrough. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. There we go, church. First two um, points. Next week, I'll be sharing the last two. So persistent faith, your faith. Next week will be our faith and God's faith. Hallelujah. Well, I'll see you at church on the weekend. Make sure that you get to um, all the services. Um, Pastor Deal preaches a powerful word. The other pastors also, we'll be in person there, um, praying for needs, uh, preaching. The local pastor will be preaching at the service as well. So Pastor Deal's message will be there and the local pastor. And uh, we're going to come together and trust God for miracles. I believe King's Revival Church is a church of revival. It's a, it's a church of healing. It's a church of miracles. It's, it's a church of deliverance. Um, every service... We have testimonies. God does things in the service. He does things in, in the week. I'm telling you, um, there are miracles, signs and wonders that, that follows Pastor Dill, Dill's ministry. It happens in our churches. If you're listening to this and you are um, in another country, if you are just visiting Dubai, make sure you get to the King's Revival services and God will do something for you. I believe it. We're seeing it every week. And God can do the same for you. God bless you, church. I love you. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye for now.